Hey, how are you all today? Welcome back. You hanging in there? I hope you are. <laughs> it's public school week around these parts, and it's always cool to see the uh, pictures of, of kids going back to school and uh, seeing these kids get back at it. Uh, they grow so fast, I know from experience. So if you are in the middle of raising kids right now, I know you're probably like, man, I can't wait for this to be over. Don't say that. They grow too fast. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the ride. And by the way, praying for you. Our church is praying for you. Praying for parents and students. Praying for educators. That uh, this would just be an incredible uh, school year for all of you. I know it feels like maybe some things are up in the air again with uh, with COVID and all of that stuff. But hey, here's the deal. We're, we're battle tested, right? We, we've been here before and uh, we just continue to trust and praise God that he will get us through. He's done it before. He'll do it again. And uh, so we just keep having that kind of faith. Remember... Remember how he got you through this last year and lean into that and be encouraged by that uh, for this next year, okay? Give those kids, by the way, uh, if, you're, if you're in the middle of raising those kids, give those kids what's most important. Give them eternity. Give them Jesus. Give them Jesus. It's the most important thing you and I can do for our kids. So, all right, that's not the gist of what we want to talk about today, but that's a nice little uh, conversation for us to have this week. Uh, we have been looking at um, this idea of becoming God's best version of us, living out our God-given potential. We are here, and we want to be there. And to get from point A to point B, to that better version, we could say takes transformation in our lives. It takes transformation. Transformation in us begins by staying connected to the source of nourishment in our lives. His name is Jesus Christ, and it comes by way of his Holy Spirit that lives in us. Remember what we said early on. Our job isn't to produce the fruit in our lives. It's to stay connected to the one who produces that in us. That was a really important lesson early on when we talked about this transformation that can take place in us. We also said that transformation happens when our minds are renewed, our thoughts make us. And our thoughts, what we think about any given situation, what we think about any person, sets us up for how we feel about those things. So our thoughts are incredibly important to getting us to the best version of ourselves. So what do we need to do? We need to focus our thoughts on God. And last week, when it comes to this idea of transformation, we said that, that one of them, the, the, the more transformational things that happens in us comes by way of our relationships. Meaningful connections with God and others help us flourish. People have an incredible impact on us in the way we do life. You only need to go as far as your upbringing to figure out the power and influence of relationships on us. Relationships, meaningful connections in relationship are crazy important to transformation. Well, I have one more for us. This, this living out the potential, this transforming that has to take place to get us from point A to point B in our lives. 
uh, just just one more today, we're, and then we'll, we're we're gonna wrap this subject up. Um, like relationships, it's something that is common to humanity. What do I mean by that? It, I, I mean this: if if I were to survey one hundred people and ask them what has brought change to their lives they would all say people. Somewhere along the way, a person, some people, have, have caused change in them. Uh, teachers, coaches, parents, uh, spouses, kids, whatever that might be, but people, relationships, we've already talked about that. And those same 100 people, every one of them would say, there's been a circumstance or two in my life that has changed me. Circumstances. In fact, very few things change us like the circumstances we find ourselves in with each passing season of our lives. In fact, Paul said this about transformation in circumstances. Let me read this to you in scripture. This is found in Romans 5 this letter to the church at Roman. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, develop, developing in our lives. This is part of transformation, development. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope, will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Did you catch how he described circumstances? He described them as the, the fun day skipping through the meadows. No, he didn't. He didn't say that. He called them what? What did he call circumstances? He called them trials and problems. Unfortunately, I, I guess maybe that's the right word, unfortunately, our greatest days of change usually happen in adversity. They usually happen in the storms. It's the rough days that lead to growth and therefore transformation. So there's an unusual evergreen called the lodgepole pine that is seen in great numbers in the West. And I've read that the cones of this pine can hang on this tree for years and years. And even when they do fall, they do not open. The cones of this lodgepole pine only open when they come in contact with intense heat. And this is kind of where God's design is pretty cool. Uh, when a forest fire rages throughout the parks and forests and lands and trees are destroyed, we're in a fire season right now out west, at that same time, the heat of those fires is opening up the cones of, of these lodgepole pines. And it's these pines that are often the first trees to grow in this area that's been burned by the fire. The fire comes and new growth is born. Fire comes, something new is born. We've all been through fires, right? We're actually living in one yet today called COVID. But there's other fires too. There's divorce. There's the death of a spouse. There's the death of a parent. There's sick kids. There's seasons where we are out of work. 
There's bad news from the doctor. Accidents. And the list goes on and on and on. When we take a 10,000 foot view of those kinds of fires, I think we realize we learn a lot in those moments. We learn a lot there. If, and this is a big if, if we choose to be taught, if we choose to learn, and I dare say that if we become a student, we become better people, transform people, and in turn, we become better prepared for the next fire. Becoming that student is really important. You know, I once read that we can hold three different attitudes uh, toward adversity. One attitude we can have toward adversity is to be hopeful. This is a belief that there is something good in the future. There's something good yet to happen. And I choose to learn and I will grow as I choose to learn from this so that I can experience that preferred future. That's one response, hope. Another response is despair. And despair kind of is this, you know, I have this incredible desire and this adversity for something different. But I believe that it's not going to happen. And that's despairing, isn't it? You know, I, I want it to be different, but I have this belief that it just isn't going to be different. And it makes my thoughts about the future incredibly painful. That's despair. And then there's this third response called resignation. You know, we can resign ourselves to life, as it is. And this is where maybe in some adversity, we convince ourselves that what we want, what we want to be different, what, 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 what we're looking for really isn't that big of a deal. We downplay the situation. We downplay it as a way to dull the pain. You know where we want to be. We want to be hopeful, learning through the struggles of today. And so with hope, we hang on to biblical promises like this in Romans 8. Many of you know this. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. It's really important to note, and I think we've said this a time or two before, it's really important to note that God works all things together for good. That doesn't mean that all things are good because not all things are good. There's a lot of things that happen to us that aren't good. And sometimes, and we've said this before too, sometimes it's more than we can humanly handle. You know, so many people misuse that, that verse on temptation and say, well, God won't give you more than you can stand. Well, yeah, he will, because that's where faith kicks in. That's, that's where we have to depend on something bigger than ourselves. And so there's going to be some things we come up against that are bigger than us, that are bigger than what we can humanly handle. But hope, hope says that God will work out something good from my pain. The best version of us, the best version of you, will always include hope in the difficult circumstances of life. So, the rough seasons are, well, they're pretty horrible, aren't they? But, taken with a hopeful perspective, they are not completely bad. In fact, that adversity, those fires, those trials, 
they transform us like very few things can. Adversity changes my priorities. It changes my perspective, my outlook on life. Prior or uh, Adversities make me look beyond myself. Adversities, because they get to be bigger than me, cause me to look up. Adversity helps me realize that through God, I have more perseverance, I have more staying power than I ever realized. And that helps me be more confident in the next fire. Adversity gives me eternal perspective, causing me to consider eternity more than it at any other point in my life. So be hopeful in the storm. Be hopeful in the storm. There's a lot that will happen in you and to you if you believe in the goodness of God. Our best selves are often chiseled out of our worst moments. That's tweetable. <laughs> our best selves are often chiseled out of our worst moments. So take heart. Be encouraged. God is at work in you. And he is definitely at work at you and doing some of his greatest work in the middle of your adversity. So hang in there. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you again for this time together this afternoon, and I pray that there was something today that would be encouraging, especially to those who might be really struggling today. Um, maybe there's some, some fires in their life that uh, are hard to understand, hard to figure out, and hard to know next steps. Lord, I pray that for those that are, that are really going through it right now, that you keep them hopeful like only you can. Not trying to dull the pain by resigning to it all and not becoming um, so despairing that they don't see anything changing. But Lord, hopeful in you that you work things out for good. That you take us through these incredibly difficult moments, these incredibly difficult seasons. And you have something beautiful to work out in our lives. Uh, Lord, we don't like to admit it, but I think we all know it. The storms are truly where we are transformed. Those are the places that if we can learn and stay hopeful, we grow there better than in anything else in our lives. So we just take a moment to recognize that today. And, and, and for the adversity that maybe we are faced right now with, or for the adversity that is maybe knocking on our door. We say to that storm, we say to that fire, we say to that adversity, I'm going to learn, I'm going to grow, I'm going to get close to God, and I'm believing when I come out the other side of this thing, I'm gonna be a better person in the name of God. Help us to live there. Help us to understand that. And help us to, um, to lean into your strength in our weakest moments. Today, Lord, we thank you that through the trials and through the adversities, through the circumstances of life, you are right there with us, walking beside us. We love you today, God. We thank you for your unconditional love in each of our lives. And it's in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. It's great being with you today. 
hey, finish the week strong. You've got this because God has you. And remember that God does some of his greatest work in our difficult moments. Our best selves are chiseled out of our worst moments. Hang in there. Be encouraged. Praying for you. Take care.